So welcome to segment two, how does interprofessional collaboration impact care, the patient's perspective? In our last segment, we covered some of the definitions. We heard provider perspectives on the importance of interprofessional collaboration, and we used a case to illustrate some of the concepts. In this segment, we want to focus on the patient perspective. We'll talk about what we mean by patient-centered care. We'll hear a patient's perspective on interprofessional team-based care. And we'll review some of the evidence in the literature on patient views on interprofessional team-based care. We're focusing on the patient perspective because ultimately the goal of interprofessional collaboration is to improve pair care for patients. This could range from decreasing rehospitalization rates for a patient with congestive heart failure, to improving chronic illness management in a disease such as diabetes, or improving patient safety through reducing errors uh, in medications. It could also mean improving the patient's experience of care or satisfaction with the care that they receive. A critical element of the definition of interprofessional collaboration is that providers work with patients, their families, and their carers and communities. Patients expect that there will be collaboration between the healthcare providers who are taking care of them, and we need to rise to that expectation. Now let's hear from a patient, Royce Paulson, about his experience being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and hear who was on his team of healthcare providers. I did have a group of healthcare professionals. Um, I'd say the first would be the internist. Uh, she's the one who diagnosed me. She referred me to an endocrinologist at UCSF, and I've been seeing him for uh, the last 12 years. Um, there's also a group of nurses. Um, there was, uh, they're all diabetes educators. Um, also, there is a nutritionist, and uh, to a much lesser degree, a pharmacist comprised the team. Well, they coordinated the, the care because they communicate really well. Uh, they're all in the same location, and that facilitates communication. Um, as an example, I remember one time when I, when I was first diagnosed, I was uh, given a prescription of Novolog, which is a type of insulin. And I was taking that, and the doctor said to make an appointment with um, a nurse in two weeks. So I did that. And when I went in, and, and also I had to record my blood sugar levels, which you have to do when you have diabetes. And I showed her the numbers, and the numbers are very high still, even though I was taking insulin. They were way too high. So she got on her cell phone and called the doctor. Um, and he was not on that location on that particular day. Um, and they talked, and then they came to the conclusion that I should um, be put on another type of insulin as well as the Novolog. And they, they put me on an insulin called Lantus. So with, those, with a combination of those two, my blood sugar levels came down to where they, where they were supposed to be. Uh, but that's an example of how they communicated, and there's other examples of good communication. In the last 10 to 15 years, there's been a movement from a model of disease-centered care to a patient-centered care model. In a disease-centered care model, the healthcare provider makes almost all the decisions uh, based on their clinical experience and the results of tests. In contrast, in a patient-centered model, patients are active participants in their care, and they receive services that are focused on their needs, their desires, and their preferences. And depending on a patient's preferences, their family or caregivers may also be involved as active participants in their care. Represented in this diagram is what patient-centered care might look like um, for a patient with diabetes, such as Mr. Paulson. At the center, you have the patient and their family, and then on the outside ring, you have the multiple care providers that they're interacting with and who are coordinating the care for the patient. Patient-centered care is defined as a partnership among practitioners, patients, and their families that ensures that decisions respect patients' wants and needs and preferences, and that patients have the education and support they need to make decisions and participate in their own care to the extent that we, they desire. Let's hear again from Royce Paulson about his perceptions of the benefits of having a team take care of him and his diabetes. Well, having a team made a difference uh, to me in my care um, because I was able to learn about diabetes much faster and learn how to manage the disease much faster than if I had only seen my endocrinologist 
alone because any doctor only has so much time they could spend with um, with a patient. Um, and therefore, the time, the, the learning curve takes much longer. Um, but by, by seeing a team, I was able, some, and all those people are very knowledgeable, I was able to learn about diabetes uh, very much faster. And I learned how to manage the disease much, uh, much faster. Recently, the Hartford Foundation surveyed 1,000 older adults about their experiences of health care. And in this survey, they asked patients whether they were receiving patient-centered, team-based care. Only 27% of individuals reported that they were receiving patient-centered team-based care. Another 30% were unsure. And then fully 43% uh, reported that they were not receiving patient-centered team-based care. Of those patients who were receiving patient-centered team-based care, 83% felt like this had made a difference in their health. Of those who weren't receiving patient-centered team-based care, almost three-quarters of them felt like this was the type of care that they would want. And 61% felt like that type of care would actually improve their health. Although there's still accumulating evidence of the positive impact of patient-centered care, there's less data on patients' perspectives about team-based care. One thing we know is that patient-centered medical homes are associated with positive effects on the patient experience of care. And in patient-centered medical homes, care is often team-based. Another study looking at physician-nurse teams in the emergency department setting found that these teams were associated with higher patient satisfaction ratings. And then in a qualitative study looking at primary care patient perspectives, in one Canadian primary care practice, an interprofessional team-based model was endorsed uh, by the patients, and they valued the expertise of the team members. So now let's, let's have you think about an experience when you or a family member received health care from an interprofessional team of providers. Was it patient-centered? Why or why not? We look forward to reading your responses.